says now saving for a child's education is one of the most important goals for any parent. A few years back, the South African government introduced the Fundisa product, uh, but Greg Snedden from Financial Coach uh, has run numbers and he says they don't add up when it comes to this education product. Uh, so joining us from Cape Town to, dis to discuss this, we've got Greg Snedden. He, of course, as I said, a financial advisor at The Financial Coach and Bernard Soropa, who is financial advisor at Old Mutual. Um, Greg, very quickly, just run us through how this, project, uh, how this product actually works. Samantha, the, the essential ingredients are you put money away, the government gives you a 25% uh, bonus on your contribution. It's capped on the first 200 Rand. So on 200 Rand, you could get a 50 Rand bonus. The money is invested into a, a very conservative unit trust fund. And as when your child is ready for education, the money is then paid to the tertiary educational institution by the National Student Financial Aid Scheme. And it's, there you go. If you leave before that period, if you withdraw your money, you'd forfeit the bonus, but you can take your contributions plus any growth. So, so why do you argue that uh, the product is, is fundamentally flawed? I think the, product, the concept is absolutely fantastic and is far superior to any other educational offering in that it uses a unit trust. So I think from that point of view, it's absolutely fantastic. But there's too little risk in the fund in which the people are investing. You cannot invest into cash for 18 to 20 years and expect to get a decent return. You just can't do it. Okay, so it's cash. Uh, do, you, do you agree with that, uh, Bernard? Yes, I do. So the fact that it's uh, kind of got a low risk profile. Yes, uh, you, if you check the, the structure of the, of, the, of the fund itself, they, they, they've got uh, savings, <coughs> fixed deposits, and a bit of uh, bonds in there. But the bonds that they have in there are pretty much your one year to three year bonds max. And those ones, uh, basically the, the, the composition of that fund, they don't give you as much returns in the long run as you would uh, uh, expect. Because if you, if you, if you look at uh, education planning, it's, a, it's the type of an investment that you do for a long term most of the time. Your kid is probably a couple of months old and then you decide that you, you want to save for towards their education. So that's a, a, a long term investment at the end of the day. Mm -hmm. So what normally happens is that uh, you find that uh, people are scared of risk out there. So probably that's the reason why government suggested that uh, they, they go the, the conservative route. But with conserv conservative funds or conservative investments, at the end of the day, over a term of uh, 10 years, you will definitely not be able to beat inflation. Yeah, equities, as they say, always outperform. And of course, we had that graph up on the screen, and we'll run through what that was saying earlier, because we have, of course, uh, looked at the Fundisa Fund relative to other unit trust offerings in the market. Um, but before we g get to that, Mark, give us your views on Fundisa right now. Okay, so Garth and I had quite a heated debate about it, because we're doing a little prep for the show. And I, I mean, Garth, Garth will have his rent on it shortly. I mean, mm -hmm. so I've got... I've, I've I got can see him fired up <laughs> there. <laughs> <laughs> I've got two kids uh, well, uh, and, uh, and I'm sponsoring a third one. So for me, it's a cheap, easy, n nearly, th th there's no real cost <laughs> uh, cost side to it. And, and I started the kids off on it a couple of, uh, about 18 months back. And uh, you know that it's quietly accruing there. I can't touch it. Uh, it it's there for them in 18, when they turn 18. I, I ran the numbers. I think I actually had the discussion with Greg probably a year ago, and you know we just started doing the numbers then, just saying does this actually add up? A and ultimately, I decided well I'll, I'll supplement that with a contribution towards Satrix Rafi for the oldest kid because we needed some uh, something more in the equity space. Mm -hmm. So you know I, I'd, I I love the concept. I think Fundisa as a concept is brilliant, and I think that it's something that government should be looking to replicate. We have such a poor savings culture in South Africa, um, and while <coughs> uh, the people that it's aimed at are, could could easily they need to have some idea of savings and I think that this gets their foot in the door I don't think it serves the ultimate goal that um, that, that it's been set up for mm -hmm. it, it doesn't doesn't make sense also that they've got a maximum contribution there yeah. what, are, what are your thoughts on that guy um, I'm gonna hold my thoughts on that I, I, I want to have my rent first so, okay. so I spent there we go. I, I, <laughs> I spent the better part of this morning trying to figure out what is the underlying fund that this thing invests in? Now, there's absolute misinformation um, on, on all the websites. If you go to the, um, the Fundisa website, it tells you that the underlying, f it, it, it invests in income funds um, supplied by Coronation, Vestec, Old Mutual, and Stanley. Mm -hmm. If you phone the Nedbank um, call center, um, and they have their own uh, Fundisa brochure on their website, they tell you, oh, it's, it goes into money market. 
Um, I eventually managed to find out that it appears as if the, the Fundisa Fund is actually managed by Stanlib. Um, and according to the fund fact sheet that was sent to me, 98% of the money that goes to Fundisa goes into domestic bonds. Mm -hmm. So it's by a larger bond fund. Mm -hmm. um, no one, including a CISA, could tell me if the other um, unit trust platforms like Coronation, Investec, Old Mutual, etc., have their own um, uh, uh, Fundisa products, <coughs> and it would make sense that they wouldn't, because otherwise you'd have di different performances of different funds. But essentially, what it seems like is all the money just gets channeled to Stanlib. Yeah. Um, but it took me the better part of a morning just to find that out and to find out what Stanlib is putting the money into. So it's ninety-eight percent domestic bonds. Mm. Which brings okay. me to my next point. Yeah. Why not? Short term. Would you want to be investing now in in a fund that's ninety-eight percent domestic bonds? Bond yields are at record lows. Mm. Everyone's saying. That the, that the bond market is, uh, has run too hard. Mm -hmm. um, if you're if you investing for your child's education, I would argue, I don't think putting a lump sum into bonds is necessarily the right thing to do. Um, but the most interesting thing to me is that Nedbank, Coronation, um, ASISA itself, no one could actually tell me um, who, who the, the, the underlying fund manager is. Mm -hmm. It took me literally the whole morning to figure that out. Um, now you out there, um, trying to take poor people's money to fund their, their kids' education, well, it, but no one can figure out where the money is going. Take poor people's money, perhaps well, not the right way no, to, no, to say that. It, well, it is, because according to the Fundisa fund sheet on Nedbank, it says the annual household income of, of a beneficiary has to be less than 180,000 Rand per year mm -hmm. to qualify for the bonuses. It's another thing. Mark says uh, he's, his kids are, are signed up for this, and he is getting the bonuses. I'm pretty sure Mark's earning more than 180,000 rand a year. Okay. But, but <laughs> the bottom line yeah. is complete misinformation. Okay. If a financial journalist and, and his editor can't figure this out, mm -hmm. how's the average person out there going to yeah. figure it out? And it also brings us to the point, Greg, of what CISA had to say uh, when you contacted them about the fact that they've got this low-risk uh, option here, very conservative option, looking to have high returns from a longer term perspective. What was the response you got? Yeah, it was pretty unsatisfactory. I, I think there's a, a misunderstanding of the term risk and the only measure of risk in this instance appears to be volatility. So they want to protect people from volatility risk. And as a result, they take a much bigger risk, which is, risk, which is inflation risk. And if you want to beat inflation over time, you have to have exposure to the growth asset classes of equities and property. So I don't understand why you have such a conservative fund. And just to, to uh, um, follow up on Garth's point there, there do appear to be different funds because if you look at the Morningstar return figures, the Ned Group fund has a higher return than the Standard Bank fund. I haven't been able to find the ABSA fund yet, but uh, certainly Ned Group and Stan, uh, Standard yeah. appear to have different funds because there are different returns. Th this is precisely my point, uh, and, and I'm glad Greg pointed that out because I got off the phone with Ned Bank this morning and they specifically told me their call center said they don't have a fund and they send the money to Standard. Mm -hmm. A CISA, I phoned a CISA and the person at a CISA could not tell me if the different um, uh, unit trust companies have different funds. Mm -hmm. So if a CISA can't make head or tail yeah. of something they dreamed up, yeah. How on earth are people out there supposed to know where their money's going? I, I just think it's diabolical. Yeah. So let's let's just talk about the returns relative to other options in the market, Unis Trust options. And we've got a graph that was up on screen earlier, and you've got uh, the average return for the Fundisa fund uh, sitting up at 8.58%. <coughs> you've got the average balance fund sitting at around 16.78%, and average equity 20.92%. So we'll get that graph up for you. Um, but from a financial advisor's perspective, and we're going to walk through the returns that you do see on this graph, uh, you can basically see that the balance fund option uh, starts outperforming Fundisa after six years and the equity option starts outperforming after four years. Um, so basically, and, and those returns I was pointing out there are 10 year returns to 20th of March, um, average returns. So, so basically what this is telling us is that after a very short period of time, you're a lot better off putting your kids education money into other unit trust options. I mean, how do you respond to that? What's your view on that? Look, my view when, when it comes to such uh, platforms of investing, uh, in, in financial planning, the, base, the, the first thing that you have to do is to basically uh, find out the client's investment horizon. Uh, how long are they planning to invest? What are they investing for? What's the objective? If it's an education planning thing, then that's, that's a long-term investment. Uh, if a client is investing for, short, for emergencies or short-term savings or they, they're planning to buy a house, they want to save up a deposit for that, then you, you would look at such things and you will take them into consideration when you do a, 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 a plan for that client. So at the end of the day, what is important initially is that you have to find out what, what's the plan and how long does the, 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 the client have 
clients to invest. If a client is going to invest for anything seven years or more, I don't think a, a huge portion of your money should be sitting in money market or, or income funds. Mm -hmm. So that, that, that's, that, that's because I in reality, at the end of the day, inflation is going up every day. And uh, here we're talking about education planning. The cost of education increases far more than the, the our average CPI. So you have to take that into consideration also when you, when, when you do an analysis like this. Yeah, 